Hey guys, and welcome to the introduction to the rendering interface for Blender. This is going to be an overview of how the settings and stuff like that are organized in the render panel, but we're going to go more in depth about which ones are the most important to really worry about in the next few videos. For the render settings, even though it might seem a bit intimidating, there's only a few things you really have to worry about. So let's just go over each section, kind of generally speaking, in this interface. We have the render section, which is basically just you render, you know, there's the render buttons. The audio button actually renders out your audio from your video editor if you want to. This is different display settings for how you want to uh, render it. Um, you know, if you do full screen, it'll go to full screen, for example. So, um, yeah, there's that. But uh, CPU, GPU, you're going to want to turn the GPU on using CUDA. If you don't have that yet, you should go to your settings real quick. Go to system, turn on... CUDA from Cyclist Compute Device. If it's defaulted to none, then you want to turn on CUDA and check your graphics card. If it's not there, it might not be supported. Um, and then uh, there's a couple other things like that. And then you can switch to GPU that way. Dimensions here is pretty self-explanatory. We'll go over it in a little bit more detail with all these settings. It basically talks about what resolution your uh, render is going to be. Now this metadata section here talks about the stamp output. So a stamp output is pretty cool. It's very useful for work in progress productions. You have a literal stamp that you can stamp on your renders for information. So if I check this and you render it out, you'll notice that there's going to be a lot more information on this render than before. So as you can see, there's the file name, which is currently untitled and stuff like that. So that's a very, very helpful tool and um, can come in handy for a lot of different things. You also have the output, which is very important. We're going to go over this in more detail, but basically it talks about where your file is going to end up after you save it out with the render button. And um, we have freestyle here, which talks about, it's a stylistic NPR shading, which NPR stands for non-photorealistic rendering. So any kind of comic book or anime style shading might want to use freestyle for that. So freestyle is like an outlining uh, style, which it allows you to draw outlines around your characters and stuff like that pretty easily, calculates all that stuff. It's a very powerful tool, but you don't have to turn it on unless you're using it. Sampling is very important in cycles. We're going to go over this in more detail. This talks about how many times the lights will sample the reflections, the bounces, um, to get a nice photorealistic look. Geometry talks about how the scene will interpret your geometry when it renders. Um, most of the time default is okay. You can turn off the hair in the scene if you want to. Um, you can change how the hair is going to be rendered using um, line segments or curves or triangles or whatever. Um, so that's pretty important as well. But you don't have to use it too much. Usually default is okay. Light path is pretty important. This talks about the bounces as well, except it limits how much you want each individual kind of light source to bounce. For example, you have diffuse versus glossy. Glossy is going to be much more shiny. If you want it to be a little bit more high fidelity, you want to up the glossy amount, for example, uh, and stuff like that. Or maybe you want to lower the diffuse amount to speed up the render. Um, so that's pretty important. Motion blur is an optional thing. You don't have to use motion blur if you don't want to. It does slow down your render quite a bit, but it looks nice. Um, if you check this, then there's a few settings here that allow you to adjust the shutter speed and stuff like that. Kind of like in real life as well. Real cameras, the slower the shutter speed, the more the motion blur is going to be apparent. So film, this is a more general thing. This is actually where you check transparent. If you want a transparent background for cycles, you're going to want to check that option there. We have a few things here that talk about the filter type, which is a lot more advanced, so you don't have to worry about it now. And then we have performance, which talks about the performance of the render. So we have threads and uh, viewport BVH and stuff like that. One of the most important, in my opinion, is tile size. Tile size matters in your terms of your render time. So research a little bit about how much of a tile size you want. Usually default is okay, but if you're switching between GPU and CPU, your numbers are going to be very different. So make sure you pay attention to that. And we also have post-processing, which talks about whether or not you want to use the compositing or the sequencer for your final render. For the node editor, you can actually include a compositing sequence that uh, puts your image through a few filters, for example. Uh, if you uncheck that, it will ignore that node setup. If you have sequencer checked, then it will render out the video editor instead of your actual scene if you have anything in your video editor. So if you don't want to render anything out from your video editor and just want to render your scene, you're going to want to uncheck that. Uh, but most of the time, it's fine if you check this on because your sequencer is probably not going to have anything in it unless you're using it for video editing. And then we have the bake options, which is um, baking. There's a bunch of different baking options for shadows, diffuse, AO, 
and stuff like that. So that's basically the overview for Blender's render interface. And we'll go more in detail about the dimensions, the output file and sampling, and a couple others in the next few videos. So see you there.